Welcome back. Uh, the People's Democratic Party on Sunday, May 22, kicked off its primary elections for the 2023 general election. The party had in a statement by its National Organizing Secretary, Mr. Umar Bature, on Saturday night in Abuja, said its primary elections to nominate candidates for the 2023 general elections will commence as officially scheduled. The party had said for the avoidance of doubt, the State House of Assembly primaries to elect candidates would hold on Sunday, May 22, along with the House of Representatives primaries, while the senatorial primary would hold on Monday, May 23, being today. This after some rumors that the party had postponed its earlier scheduled primaries. Now, these, however, did not hold without controversy in parts of some states. One of such is Lagos, where the state chapter of the party had urged its National Working Committee to cancel the House of Assembly and House of Representatives primaries. The chairman of the PDP in Lagos State, Philips Ivoji, uh, addressing a news conference along with other state executives of the party, governorship aspirants and party leaders in Ikeja, claimed that the ad hoc delegates list brought by the electoral committees for both primaries had been compromised. In Niger State, some persons sustained injuries at Lemu, the headquarters of Bako local government area. In August State, confusion, delay and alleged kidnapping of delegates dogged the exercise. In the primaries of the State House of Assembly and House of Representatives elections uh, could not hold in the centers designated for the five legislative seats of our alleged security threat. Now, in a Kwaibom State, a federal lawmaker, Ukbong Udo, Imanul Ukbong Udo, refused to take part in Sunday's national Assembly primary citing an existing court order in a case against the Akwaibom PDP at a federal high court in Abuja. In Delta State, gunmen numbering over 10 invaded the Anglican Girls Grammar School, Ozoro, in Isoko North local government area, a venue of the PDP House of Assembly primary. Now, we don't have time to exhaust the reports of controversy surrounding the PDP primary, so let's, at this point, welcome our guest on the breakfast this morning, Diro Odemi, as a former Deputy Publicity Secretary of the People's Democratic Party. Mr. Odemi, thanks for joining us. Thank you very much for this opportunity. I'm happy to be with you. What's your assessment and your verdict of the exercise of primaries for the State House of Assembly and House of Representatives of the PDP that held yesterday across the country? Um, yes, uh, we are aware of a competing problem here and there, and we are aware of the crisis here and there, but they are not unexpected in a setting in any political context where two or three people are, are aspiring for a position. But that is not to say that as a political party, we will not manage it. We still come out of and we will resolve whatever is the crisis. But by and large, it was successful in most states. If we have 36 states where we are taking uh, this election, and we are able to record success in over two-thirds of, of the states, I think it should give us the credibility of organizing ourselves. Uh, but let's also, I mean, let's delve to a dose state where uh, the report says that, you know, the PDP in a dose state is divided as it seems to have conducted a power of primaries. I mean, looking at, uh, you know, the opposition, the PDP is an opposition party. One would think that, you know, the party should put her acts together. At this point in time, it's not the time where you begin to experience power uh, primaries. I, I just said it. Politics is not uh, always a peaceful environment. Even in churches, where you believe sanity should be, there are still some crises, you know, and this is politics. And in a uh, state situation, is quite, is, uh, quite uh, critical in the sense that you will agree or you will understand that the governor came to join PDP at the late hour of the election. And uh, all the PDP members they met on ground, you know, even though they accepted him and, you know, they cooperated with him. But he came with his own team from APC, which more or less is creating a kind of a crisis. But the party is aware, and it is one of the few states that the party has set up a series of reconciliation committee to look into the issue and ensure that we do not lose that state, either, you know, either the 
uh, assembly or rep or the Phoenix. So in the crisis, we agree. But what makes a party pitch or how to know a party that is well organized is how they are able to resolve the crisis. So it's not beyond this redemption. We will resolve it at the appropriate time. We are aware of the crisis. All right, you've talked about Edo State. Let's go to Lagos State, and I'm sure you were, and you heard also from the introduction yeah. that we gave that uh, the party chairman of the state held a, a press conference, you know, something as big as a press conference, uh, calling for the primaries to be moved forward. Of course, they weren't, and they held. He was um, uh, talking about a certain uh, delegates list. You know, and uh, was complaining about the delegates list, uh, the ad hoc delegates list. He said it was brought by electoral committees uh, uh, for both primaries, and he's claiming that the delegates list had been compromised. But they still went ahead to hold. We have a procedure. We are we are we expect all these things to happen. So the, but the party has a procedure, you know, in its uh, electionary uh, process. This is that after every election, there is always an appeal committee that will be set up to look into whatever issues is being contested, you know, about by the opponent. So what's going to happen in this case is that the uh, appeal committee will look into this issue. If indeed the list of delegates sent to Lagos are the authentic one or they are, you know, doctored, as soon as they do the uh, appeal committee, we take a decision and write their recommendation to the NWC. And it doesn't end there. The NWC will still subject their decision to the National Working Party, to the uh, what we regard as the Supreme Body, which is the NEC, National Executive Council. So the decision of the National Executive Council that will be the last to resolve this thing. So it's a process. If, if they are complaining about the doctor bleed, yeah, it's normal. But the appeal committee will look into it. That is why PDP is organized. All right. Uh, um, in a quiet bomb state, uh, a lawmaker is is claiming he has um, uh, an order of court, uh, or there's a case uh, before the the federal high court in Abuja, and he's saying that um, he won't take part. Uh, he refused to take part in the uh, national assembly primaries on Sunday, the House of Representatives primary, citing that court order against uh, the Akwaibom PDP. Uh, we're going to be seeing something, something there. Probably the party missing out on the election, at least for the House of Representatives um, uh, election in 2023. If, if this is true, the PDP respects the court, and we always respect the decision or the judgment of the court. And that is where we have a senior advocate of Nigeria as a legal advisor. Whatever situation or all legal matters are brought before him, and he will advise the party on the next step to take. So if indeed there is a court judgment somewhere, I'm sure the legal advisor will give appropriate advice to the party on what next to do. So it's no problem at all. We are not seeing it as a problem. But one thing I can assure you, is that PDP as a political party will not disobey any court judgment. But, but it seems the party has not been able to move on from its past of um, uh, of, of, of se seeming lack of internal democracy, lack of transparency. You know, with what's happening in Lagos State, for instance, the party chairman, Ivoji, said, and I quote, we're all shocked to see that the lists do not reflect the authentic elected ad hoc delegates as conducted by the organs of the party at the ward level and supervised by the DSS and INEC. You know, what he said is that copies of the ad hoc list that emanated from the state and submit, were submitted to INEC are completely different from the one brought by the committee for the purpose of the exile. How on earth, uh, dear old Amy, can that happen? You see, what you are telling me now is a complaint. Let me summarize this, everything at a complaint. Let me summarize everything as what the chairman feels is not the right thing to have been done. But what I'm now telling you is that as a political party, we will look into every complaint and we will do what is right to ensure that justice and fairness, you know, operates within the what, what, I, what I'm asking so, is, is, is what, what could possibly, do you know what I mean? What I'm asking is what could possibly, that a yes. competent committee of the appeal will be set up. In fact, it has already been set up. So but, 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 we, we've heard, sorry to interrupt you, sir, but we've heard, we've heard this. So, we've, whatever injustice has been carried out yesterday, 
speaking with regret. But dear, dear Ode, I'm, I'm sorry to interrupt, but we've heard... Yes, yes. We've heard this, this, this line over and over again. You know, it's the usual line from you politicians that we have a party procedure, we have a party process, and we have an appeals committee that will be set up and everything will be looked into. But that, that most times never happens. You know, the, 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 the will of those who are behind some of these things prevails at the end of the day. So I'm asking you, how is it that the list, the ad hoc list submitted by the party uh, of the ad hoc delegates to INEC, from a primary at a ward level supervised by INEC and DSS, that that list was not brought. It was a different list that was brought to Lagos State. How is that possible? See, you are breaking up. I hardly had that question. Can you repeat it or summarize it briefly, please? All right. Can, can you hear me now, sir? Hello? Yes. Can you hear me now, sir? All right, we'll, we'll, try, we'll try and get, get that sorted out. Dear Oye Odemi, can you hear me, okay. please? Can you hear me, please? I can hear you. I can hear yes. you now. I'm, I'm saying that um, most times this excuse or this reply you're giving me, which is that uh, uh, you have a party procedure and uh, appeals and all that, that the complaints will be looked into. From my experience, yes. you know, it always ends up as medicine after death and never yields the desired result. So... The party chairman in Lagos State, your party member, is saying that after they conducted the exercises at the world level as supervised by INEC and the DSS, they handed over the ad hoc list to INEC, that the list that was brought from Abuja by the national, uh, by the committee, the screening committee, um, by the supervising committee, it's different from what they submitted to INEC. And I'm asking, how does that happen? I want to believe the INEC is an unbiased umpire in this situation. And I am telling you that there is no decision taken yesterday that cannot be overturned by the end of the UC. It's not the end of everything and it's never the final. And I've just told you a process now that after the appeal, it comes to the National Executive Council. So the National Executive Council are very established department about whatever we do in the party because they don't want a situation whereby a winner will emerge after the general election and through the court judgment or through the, uh, the court process such a uh, candidate is nullified and you know given to our opponent the APC so we wouldn't wonder and that is why we always maintain that clear record so whatever decision was taken yesterday if it is not in line with fairness justice and what is expected of a normal uh, electoral process. It will be upturned by the party. So it's not the final and it's never the end. And for the fact that it was witnessed by him, uh, by INEC and the security agencies, you know, it shows that there are witnesses. It shows that it is really that could not go far. So the party will look into it and we address it. I give you my word on that and I'm assuring you. Mm. Um can we also, I mean, look at this or the conversation surrounding the primaries, I mean, that has already started. Now, do you think that the PDP would factor what the people want? We understand that at the primary levels, I mean, at the primary level, it's within the, the, the power of the party and the delegate, you know, to decide who becomes the flag bearer. But you also have, on the other hand, the people saying that, we're looking out for specific candidates, and if this candidate do not emerge as a flag bearer, the chances of having the PDP back in 2023 is very slim. So do you think that you know, your party is also factoring, or is your party considering uh, you know, the thoughts of the people, what the people want? Because the elections is going to move away from you know, just the party and to individuals. <laughs> Um, what you have just said is uh, one of the strategies the PDP has adopted. We know we have been out of government and out of power for quite some years now. And our ultimate aim and intention is to go back to that government. We want to assure Nigerians that giving us another opportunity, we will do what is right in, in terms of governance. And as a result, we are listening to them. We are reading their leaves, and we have a committee already that is doing that. And that is why the party has 
find it difficult to zone the presidency to a particular area because we are listening to Nigerians and we want to know what they want so that what they want is what we are going to give them. It's part of our strategy and it is something we just have to take seriously to win 2023 election. So right now, we are aware and the people we are given the power to to elect the president or the flag bearer of our party are quite aware of the fact that we need to select the best candidate so that at the end of the day, the job of electionary and the campaign will be made very easy. So we are listening so and we are studying the situation. But, but this is not just limited to the um, primaries uh, for the presidential candidate. I mean, selecting who becomes the flag bearer for the party at the presidential level. We're talking about, you know, the different positions across, you know, from the State House of Assembly amongst orders. Yes, it is the same answer that I will give you. We, we have experiences in the past. There, there was uh, what happened, something like this happened in your state in the past, where we have uh, uh, she, uh, Dr. Olusha Gumimiko, who left PDP to contest an election under the Labour Party. And he won because of his personality and credibility, which the people in Ondo State believed in. And it was much after that, after winning that election, that he came back to PDP. So it's not a new situation to us. We are aware of it. And that is why we are careful in selecting who will, who will fly the flag of the party. Both at the, at the state assembly, at the, at the right level, and at the senate level, and up to the presidential. So we are, we are quite aware of this. And that is why if you, are, if, if you have a questionable character, if you don't have that credibility, of course, the delegates are not going to, to vote for you. So we know because our power is limited. We can only select the candidate. The ultimate power belongs to the electorate who are going to ensure that they do, they do justice with their voters' card. All right. Uh, Dero, before you go, what's um, the update with the situation in River State? I'm sure you're very aware of um, the arrest and detention of Farad Agogo, Governor Shibasparan, who is also a serving member of the House of Representatives. For the mere fact that uh, he is a serving House of Representatives member, and he is not being subjected to debate on the floor of the House, shows that what is happening in River State is pure judicial or police matter. So we would rather allow whatever is the accusation, you know, for the for him to defend himself, rather than double into it and say, yeah, because it is a river state, or because we have a presidential candidate or aspirant from there, you know, we have to subject it to a public uh, debate. No. It is a criminal matter that is being handled by the judiciary. So don't let us comment. It, 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 it could be argued that it is a political matter that is trying to be turned into a criminal matter. And uh, the, the party needs to needs to do something about this so that it does not suffer at the end of the day. When a matter is before the judiciary, when a matter is between the court, it is beyond the political party to double it or to talk about. But that is not to say that underneath or behind the scene, the party is not talking about it. We are, but it will be resolved. I can assure you of that. All right. All right. Thank you very much for your time. Uh, and for your expert analysis, uh, former Deputy National Publicity Secretary of the People's Democratic Party, Dero Demi, uh, has joined us on the first uh, segment of our discussion this morning. Thank you for your time, sir. Thank you very much for the opportunity. I appreciate it. Interesting. Today is the international day to end obstetric fistula. When we return from our break, we speak to a guest uh, as we look at the importance of this day. Please stay with us.